Hello my dear health seekers, Inga from Health Origins here and welcome to week 17 of Meal Prep for Weight Loss show. So today two new recipes I'm going to be making is one um, is a Lithuanian, my favorite dish which is sauteed sauerkraut and another dish I'm making um, is from the Forks Over Knives cookbook again and it's spinach, mushroom and quinoa pilaf. Pilaf? I don't know how you say it, but yeah. So that's the recipes. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this pilaf recipe and um, let's get into them. So we'll start with the fork server knives recipe. Um, we're gonna need two um, large leeks and well mine are kind of largish medium but it's saying only kind of white and light green parts but I'm gonna use the whole leek um, and I've already chopped one up here um, but I'm gonna show you how I normally chop leek because leeks can be quite difficult to chop I know some people chop them fully up and then put everything in water and then rinse it to make sure there's no grit or dirt in there and you can do that but I don't like this method I prefer a different method because I think you wash off a lot of, of goodness leakiness right off it so what I like is I like cutting it probably about in half or somewhere kind of somewhere where you think the you know when you see where the the end of the leaf meeting here so you probably want you know maybe five seven centimeters away from that because that's normally where um, the dirt kind of starts so what I'm gonna do I'm just show you so I'm gonna cut this off um, and this if you see it'll probably be nice and clean inside so this is just easy you just slice this thinly as normal so this is perfectly fine and you can you know put it in uh, a bowl but for this bit so what we're going to be doing I've got a bowl of water here so I'm going to be peeling uh, layer by layer leaves and if you can see there's dirt in there so I'm gonna just put them in water and gonna peel the next one and see there's quite a bit of dirt so I'm gonna just peel them until I can you know keep on seeing the dirt underneath the leaves there so there's quite a bit of dirt here um, so I'm just gonna keep on peeling and see how now it's almost finishing so I think there's not gonna be too much dirt under here and the next one up as well is not that much um, so yeah and in here you can see it's actually quite clean inside so you can peel um, you know more if you want but actually from looking at it um, I'm pretty happy to see that there's no dirt in in the layers in between or not that I can see anyway so I'm gonna just you know cut off that little bit and that looks pretty clean to me so I'm gonna just chop this up and if you do see some dirt in between then you can always chuck it back in the last bit but it looks clean to me and especially if you're using organically grown um, leeks or, or veggies for example then you know a little bit of dirt um, is not going to really um, harm you because you'll probably actually get B12 bacteria on it so you'll get the B12 from it as well um, that's how back in the day we used to get our B12 naturally actually and um, it was from the well water so the bacteria was in well water naturally and also on our veggies um, from the garden, you know, because we, we wouldn't disinfect them, we would just wash them and the particles of dirt would still stay on it and that's where bacteria lives, the B12 um, producing bacteria so that's how we used to get 
you know, enough B12, but obviously these days when everything is so disinfected, we know, you know, we drink, you know, fl filtered and chlorinated and fluoridated water, um, we don't get, um, and that our vegetables are, you know, washed in probably also chlorinated water and things, you know, so we don't no longer get the um, bacteria on our food anymore. So I'm just gonna quickly wash um, these and chop them as well. I mean, for the very outer layers, um, the very tops you might wanna discard if they're really kind of looking quite dirty and tired looking. Um, I might not use some like the very top leaves, let's see, I think this is a very top leaf, so I might just discard that one. But more inner ones, I'm gonna wash um, and chop up. So you can tell if they're very like paper thin and, and quite, you know, tired looking, then you might not wanna use them. But these are nice and fresh still, so I'm gonna just wash them well, make sure they're not dirty and if the bits are just <clears throat> slice the bit off um you know like slice the very tops off if they're looking a bit raggedy i'm trying to use as much of you know the edible veg as possible i i don't like to waste um at all uh, you probably if you've seen any of my videos i don't like food waste um, need to try and use as much as we can so just cut off the tops of these it's a bit of dirt on them yeah these are fine so I'm just gonna finish chopping these up so I've tidied up a little bit um, now while we um, do one other thing I'm gonna put my um, my stainless steel uh, pot on or pan on um, just so that it heats up. Um, right, so I've got about 10 grams of, um, these are portobello mushrooms that were dried out. Um, ideally you want porcini mushrooms, so the recipe um, specifies porcini mushrooms. I haven't got any porcini mushrooms, so I'm um, making do with portobello mushrooms, which are not as flavorful as the porcini. So if you can get porcini mushrooms, um, definitely do that. So what I did, I've soaked the mushrooms, the dry mushrooms in one cup of boiling water. So I'm just taking them out now. For a half an hour, you need, mine was probably about 20 minutes or so, but they're soft enough because these are like, a little bit softer than porcini anyway. So I'm gonna chop those up um, a little bit. And we're also gonna use the soak liquid too in this dish. So yeah, just wanna chop the mushrooms small. And that's it done. I'm gonna wait um, another minute or so until this is really hot and we're gonna do um, a water droplet test as well. So that feels pretty hot now. So let's do a water droplet test. Yep, that's looking good. It's all r rolling around, perfect. So I'm gonna add my leeks and the mushrooms. So I've got here um, 120, shiitake, 120 grams of shiitake mushrooms. The original recipe actually stipulates about 225 grams of mushrooms. Um, and crimini mushrooms, I wonder if that's like some kind of closed cup mushrooms, like white closed cup mushrooms, but um, I haven't got, you know, 225 grams, so I'm just making do with 120 grams. 
and these you know shiitake mushrooms are really fr flavorful so I think these will be nice so I'm gonna just put those in and we're gonna dry fry this um, for about 10 minutes if it starts sticking I'm gonna add a bit of water or stock to the pan to deglaze it because we don't want to obviously burn it it smells good already so yeah so let this saute for um, 10 minutes all together keep on stirring and keep on adding some water um, and then we're gonna be putting the rest of the ingredients so I'm gonna talk you through what we'll be using so I've got so the star of the shoe is quinoa here so it's a cup and a half of um, quinoa I've got I've got two cups of stock and also it says to add the um, the water from the mushrooms and it should make three cups so actually I need to add a little bit more water so I'm gonna add a, um, a bit more water in a minute then we've got one tablespoon of thyme so this is um, dried thyme and three garlic cloves crushed here obviously our mushrooms and six cups of spinach so um, it says baby spinach but any kind of spinach young spinach or even you know all the kind of spinach as in like bigger leaves would work because it needs to be chopped up so this is six cups of spinach chopped up um, yeah so that's all the ingredients really so I'm gonna just top up the water a little bit mix this so it's nicely actually reducing as you can see uh, very steamy here but um, the mushrooms and and the leeks have released their own liquid so I don't need to add anything as of yet but once it kind of dries out, dries out a little bit and starts sticking again, then I might need to add. But um, at the minute, I'm going to just top up my stock um, and mushroom liquid um, to be three cups in total. So the leeks and mushrooms have been um, frying for about 10 minutes. I kept on adding some water or stock and I'm going to add the thyme so one tablespoon of thyme and also the um, garlic crushed garlic for about 30 seconds or up to one minute you don't want it you don't want them to like burn you want it to just fry a little bit to become aromatic so I've just made some space here in the pan so I can put it to dry fry it uh, I can already start smelling the thyme and the garlic flavor um, coming through. Yeah, so you don't need very long. So that's about, I would say, that's about 30 seconds or so. So I'm going to just add all the stock. Um, add all the stock I've got and the rest of the ingredients apart from the spinach spinach we're gonna add um, at the end so I'm gonna add the mushrooms here as well the dried soaked mushrooms and the quinoa as well So add the quinoa and mix it all in. So now I need to let this come to boil and then put it on a low simmer, um, put the lid on and let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And then for the last five minutes or a little bit less, we're gonna add spinach to wilt it. And that will be the dish done. So it's been 15 minutes. Let's check on our quinoa. Wow. It's properly expanded and all the liquid has been soaked up. Look at this. Beautiful. And it looks done actually. So 
let me add I'm gonna be struggling here I think let me add this spinach what I'll do I'll just put it on the top um, and I'm gonna put the lid on for um, a few more minutes and hopefully with the heat enclosed it might will through you you obviously want to actually if you have a bigger pot you want to make sure you use a bigger pot as you can see I'm, I'm struggling with the uh, amount of spinach I've got to add so just gonna close that up and um, we're gonna check in about two three minutes so let's check this out now yeah the uh, spinach have wilted a little bit so I'm gonna just switch it off and mix it with the rest of the quinoa um, and obviously make sure you don't you know cook it much longer than that as I can see now it's starting to stick a little bit at the bottom uh, because obviously all the liquid has been absorbed so you want to be careful you might want to add a little bit more water if if you're cooking it for longer but yeah the spinach has wilted su um, sufficiently now for me to, to do a little taste test for you so that's looking good gonna take a bit of everything so let me taste test this actually um, for serving um, you add pepper and salt to taste so just do a little grind of pepper and one grind of salt because we didn't add um, much saltiness to this at all we only had obviously the stock so that's the only kind of saltiness we used so let me try this I'm actually really curious to try it Mmm, this is good. It does need more salt actually, I must say. So, but you know, it's so easy to add um, more salt onto your plate and that way you're actually adding less salt to the dish because um, once you add it to your plate, to the, you know, the bite you're eating basically, it's surface salt. So you need much less of it to feel more, like to taste more saltiness. So that's the trick for you. If you want to consume less sodium, don't put it in the dish as much, but just leave it till the end and sprinkle it just actually on your plate. This is good. Mmm, yummy. I mean, you could probably eat it as a, like, as a dish on its own maybe add um, you know some sweet chili sauce or something or even barbecue sauce I think would go uh, well here or with some roasted veggies perhaps but also that would be great because it's pilaf it's like to be eaten with say a curry I think would go really well with the curry um, or some kind of stew as well so this is a success We'll get on with the um, recipe number two, which is Lithuanian um, sauerkraut, like sauteed sauerkraut. So this is a second recipe and it's sauteed sauerkraut. So this is a Lithuanian um, recipe called Tushinti Kopusti. Um, Kopusti, we kind of mean cabbage but we know it's mostly made from actual sauerkraut. So I've got one liter of sauerkraut um, that we're gonna need and I've got here my sieve because this is quite um, tangy. So I pour and squeeze out as much of this liquid as, um, as I can, uh, otherwise it's like too tangy. So I'm gonna just um, pour this out here and don't you know don't be afraid to get a little bit mucky here I'm gonna be pressing it with my hands I've washed them so they're clean um, so yeah just put them in 
in a metal sieve or whatever sieve you're using and I'm gonna over like suspend it over a bowl and I'm gonna actually squeeze that out as well I'll squeeze the cabbage because we don't want it to stay too too sour I like the sourness and the sourness is the key obviously it has to be sauerkraut it's not going to work as nice on fresh cabbage it's it's going to be a different dish altogether um if you're not using um sauerkraut that's definitely a a, a must for this recipe so so just squeezing as much out as i can that seems good enough and then i'm gonna transfer it to a pot so my pot that I'm going to be boiling it in um, and I need about two cups of water partially to kind of immerse uh, the cabbage. It's pretty much three ingredients if you count water. It's your sauerkraut cabbage, a, a litre of sauerkraut cabbage, um, two cups of uh, boiling water and some ketchup and that is it. <laughs> Very simple but such delicious dish. Um, and we normally have it with uh, mashed potatoes mm, yummy so I'm, I'm cooking some potatoes um, in the kitchen there as well so um, you know we can mash them up and have it with this um, sauteed sauerkraut so these are two cups of water that I've uh, boiled just boiled and pouring it in don't need to like fully um, submerge it as long as you know there's um, a certain level of water um, that's what we want and now I'm gonna put it on manual um, and let it cook you know kind of stir it through we probably want to you know cook it for a good 10 15 even 20 minutes so my cabbage is boiling nicely now as you can see so I'm gonna let this simmer, um, let this um, simmer actually covered. So what you want, because you want to saute it um, a bit first. So I'm gonna let it simmer um, covered for about five minutes or so, maybe 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna, towards the end, I'm gonna open it up, let the, uh, the, the remaining water evaporate we're gonna add ketchup and then we're gonna close the lid again to let it saute with the ketchup a little bit more to get that nice depth of flavor so yeah so um, we'll leave that um, cooking for a little while um, and I wanted to uh, to say don't throw away the lovely juice so I've, I've collected that um, sauerkraut pickle juice and I use it just as I use my olive brine. I use it for dry frying, you know, so when you deglaze the pan, I use that. Or it's really, really great to when you're um, dry roasting your vegetables. So instead of coating them in oil, I coat them in this flavorsome liquid. And it's really amazing. Also, it's really great to start a new batch of sauerkraut. So that way you get a new batch of sauerkraut much much quicker um i'm just reducing this because it's it's going eh, quite vigorously um so yeah so this can start your next sauerkraut batch so much quicker yeah um and also you could add it to like different sauces marinades pesto i use it to add to pesto or your dips as well you don't need to add any salt or any um, um kind of sour ingredients because this is already salty and sour at the same time so it's really great for dips sauces pestos that kind of thing so don't throw away um this delicious liquid and actually you could because there's so much beneficial uh, probiotic bacteria in this because um, this is sauerkraut so it's fermented um, you could actually drink a shot of this um, as for your gut health you know just have a, a little shot or even make um, you know a kind of a mixture with tomato um, juice for example it's really nice mixed in then you don't need to add any 
um, any more salt or anything like that. Um, it's kind of like the Virgin Bloody Mary, if you like. So it's been cooking for a good five, seven minutes um, now. So I'm going to open this up. And let um, and let the water kind of evaporate out a little bit more so I'm gonna leave this on kind of medium um, and check every so often to see when the water is no longer here on the bottom when it's pretty much evaporated, then we're going to be adding a few tablespoons of ketchup and continuing sauteing. So let's have a look. So yeah, so it's it's evaporating out, but there's still some water. So we'll keep on cooking this. So perfect. Now we have, as you can see, all the liquid has evaporated out. So I'm going to add about maybe three, four tablespoons of tomato ketchup and I'm going to mix it through. That will just give that amazing kind of tomato-y um, taste to this dish. Um, yeah, definitely need some ketchup for this dish. And as you can see, it also colored it kind of like an um, orangey um, color too. That's how I know the traditional um, dish, um, like that, looking like that. So I'm going to put a lid on and I'm going to leave this cooking or sauteing for maybe five seven minutes and we'll check on it so um i forgot to film this bit but um i switched off the pot um because it was starting to stick to the bottom um so that is ready and i have dished this out now for um, me and hopefully my husband to test this out my husband apparently is busy so um It'll be just me taste testing this. So this version is completely fat-free um, sauteed sauerkraut. However, traditionally um, in Lithuania, we make it with some oil. So at the last stage, we would put some oil with the ketchup and kind of saute it like that. So if you are not looking to lose weight, um, you're just you know maintaining your weight for example and you're not too bothered about extra fat then just add maybe a little bit of uh, maybe a couple of tablespoons of coconut milk into this um, and that will give that extra creaminess extra kind of um, fattiness that makes it even better so let me try this out and I've got some um, sweet potato and potato mash here as well Mmm, this is so good. I love this dish so much. If I had to um, pick one last meal before I die, for example, you know how they say, what would be your last meal if you could choose it? So this would be my last meal. This cabbage, some uh, mashed potato and maybe some um, kind of maybe roasted a barbecue glazed tofu pieces or seitan pieces or something like that um, or maybe some sausages um, so that would be the meal I would choose I, I just love it um, and it goes really well with the uh, potatoes as well mm -mm -mm. Mm. I mean I think it goes even better with the sweet potato mashed in with normal potatoes because there's some actual sweetness in the sweet potato that kind of uh, balances out with the sauerkraut. And there's some actual flies in, in my utility room. I've opened the window slightly and here they are and can't get out anymore. Um, so yeah, so this is the two dishes done. There's not much really left for, um, 
for the week to keep because um, this is what for my husband and my mum also has to eat some but um, but yeah this dish is so delicious so try it either like this with no um, fat or add a couple of tablespoons of coconut milk um, to the end with the ketchup um, and you know cook it for five seven minutes it's just delicious um, so let's get all the meal prep together so this is the whole lot for week 17 I've um, made a couple of extra things so this is the um, quinoa pilaf um, I've, I was making in the recipe and uh, that's the um, sauteed sauerkraut there's some mashed potato, so this is sweet potato with some white potato mashed together with um, a bit of onion powder, garlic powder and salt. Um, then I've got some cooked black beans. Um, we'll probably be make, make, making some refried beans to have with the pilaf. Um, I've got some just um, steamed potatoes as well. Um, I've made some uh, split pea uh, soup, my split pea soup that I've got a recipe I'll link for you in the description below and in the card above and then I've experimented well this is actually my um, banana bread so I've got a recipe a simple uh, five ingredient banana bread so um, I got a loot of uh, cheap ripe bananas yesterday so I was freezing some I was baking the banana um, cake with it banana bread and also I decided to make some um, some of the um, banana flapjacks so this is a recipe from Lidl website actually funny enough so I'll link to um, I'll, I'll put the ingredients down what I've used for uh, my version um, because they use honey but I use my dandelion honey. Um, um, in fact, I'm about to uh, upload a video of dandelion honey. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. <laughs> You've got to make it. So yeah, so I'll link to that recipe once I put it up on site. But um, well, you could use golden syrup, I guess. It's not as healthy of a version, but you could use golden syrup as well. Um, so I'll, I'll link to the ingredients I used to make this flapjack. My husband really liked it. I actually haven't had a, a piece of it yet. Um, so I was just too busy um, cooking and eating other things. So yeah, so this is the lot. And actually this, um, the split pea soup is um, a difference here that I added some wild garlic. So um, I finally found, located some wild garlic and I've added this to the split pea soup that I'll link to your description below or in the card above. So my, um, my forks over knives split pea um, soup that um, I've got on the channel already. So I've added some wild garlic to that. Um, and I also made wild garlic pesto. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. So my regular pesto recipe, but instead of, um, you know, the um what you call it basil instead of basil um i used wild garlic and i didn't use any um regular garlic because obviously the 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 wild garlic leaves out uh, and that was fantastic too but um but yeah so this is it let me know if you like this video give me a thumbs up let me know which recipe are you um gonna try and let me know if is there any other recipes you would like me to cook on this channel and like always remember food is fuel so be mindful of what you put in the body until the next time